Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. But this isn't any episode. This is the Nonprofit Thought Leader episode. We don't do these very often. They're very specialized. It's where we get a leader in the field of whatever it is that they're doing for the nonprofit sector. And so today we're really excited to have back with us um, Anne McCauley Lopez, one of the great thought leaders in the country about all things digital content wise. And we need this help in our nonprofit sector in a big way. So Anne, welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be back and a uh, happy belated new year. I haven't seen you in the new year yet. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, it's it's crazy, you know, <laughs> how fast already it's turned. And uh, and I, I'm really excited to join, um, get that mind meld with you to figure out what we need to be doing when it comes to the power of guest blogging. You know, we talked about doing this episode and I swear to you, I can't believe like all of a sudden how I'm seeing this phrase guest blog, you know, guest blogging, guest blogger. So it's going to be fun to get into this with you today and really learn something. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd CEO of the Raven Group, is a little under the weather today. So we said stay away IRL and digitally, get better and, and we'll rejoin. But we are joined today with our amazing partners and i want to make sure that we give a strong and hearty shout out to boomerang american nonprofit academy your part-time controller staffing boutique fundraising academy at national university nonprofit nerd and the nonprofit thought leader um, these are the folks that keep us going and growing we're well past 725 episodes and finishing up our third year starting our fourth year and the exciting part of that is that our executive producer, Kevin Pace, has done this miraculous thing. He has uh, taken all of these produced episodes and put them on our channels that you can find us on Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, and Amazon Fire TV. And if you'd like to consume us through a podcast format, we're here for you as well. This last year, we started doing that, and we've already surpassed 10,000 downloads in less than a year. So. We're really excited about that. But more importantly, we're excited to have Anne McCauley Lopez back with us, agency content writer. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I hope Jarrett feels better. It's always wonderful to see you, Julia. Hey, you told us in the green room chatter that you are coming to us from where? <gasps> New Orleans, Louisiana. I believe they say it, New Orleans here. Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying, not New Orleans. <laughs> and, uh, I tagged along. My husband's on a business trip, so I'm doing a little work, doing a little play. I had a work day. Yesterday was play, so I'm back here doing a little work. I'm excited to be here. You know, I love it, Anne, and I think that this is one of the cool things about you and your business and your sector is that you can be anywhere around the world. And I've got to ask you this before we get going. Do you find that when you do leave your enclave of where you work and play and live and you get out that it tweaks something or it makes your writing more richer or messes you up. Do you have a sense of that? Uh, I think it goes into kind of before I leave, I have a mindset of this is how this is going to go. And that really helps me stay in the zone when I need to be in the zone. And I do come up with new ideas on the road. And I think that's always it. Even if it's just leaving your, your home office or your office office, really, it, it does something to your mind to be in a different place for sure. Yeah, it's, it's really, I think, an, an interesting thing. We were talking about that a little bit before we went live, about the power of travel and the power of seeing how other people live. And I think even just in the concept of philanthropy, um, how nonprofits work in different parts of our country, and we are such a vast country. Um, and so it, it, it's kind of an interesting aspect to think that just because you write a certain way or work a certain way in one part of the country, it might not fly in another part of the country. And so this is what I'm so interested about hearing from you about this concept of guest blogging and what it means. I got to say, I've been a writer all my life, been in publishing for more than 30 years, scares the hell out of me to think I would bring somebody in outside of my staff to write. I just got a man up. Just got to say it. I know. I know. I'm like, oh, well, what are they going to say? And, and it might not fit. And, you know, it, so calm me down and explain yes. to me why this is so powerful 
Well, guest blogging is when we write on another website. So it would be me writing on the American nonprofit website or on, a, for me, it's another marketing website, for example. And that's really all it is. What's good about it is that it, uh, and what we would want, and we'll, we can dive into this a little bit. You know, I just love talking about search engine optimization, yeah. SEO. The biggest thing about this is to make sure we get a link back to our own website. Google loves when we do that. It gives us some authority. Uh, for nonprofits, I think um, guest blogging on maybe a corporate partner's website, or if you've got a relationship maybe with like an estate planning attorney, writing about planned giving, things like that, that are related to the nonprofit that can bring attention to the nonprofit that are on someone else's website to get that additional traffic and really build your audience. You know, me being on here is, is a great opportunity for both of us to share our knowledge and also for me to be giving the fortune of being in front of your audience as well, in addition to my audience. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we want to do in a written form with guest blogs. So it's really just writing on someone else's website. Um, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we're given guidelines or we're giving guidelines. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely. <laughs> so when you say you're nervous, I'm like, it's okay. We can, you and I, if you want to have guest bloggers, we'll come up with some guidelines. <laughs> Nothing gets published till it's approved, you know. <laughs> True. But I, one part of me says, and I'd love to get your feedback on this. One part of me says is that it's okay and it's powerful to have different voices that might not agree, that might share a different viewpoint. We don't, I, you know, we need to be rowing in the same direction, but we don't need to all be cookie cutters. Is that true? Or do you want to make sure that anything coming in on the guest blog position is using the same phraseology and, I mean, really cloned almost? I think it has to stay, it would have to stay within some branding guidelines mm -hmm. for the website. Um, and maybe focusing on a particular keyword, but taking that, I always think of like freelance writing. I don't tend to call myself that, you know, we've talked about that here quite a bit. It's more of a content writer, but people know the word freelance writer. So maybe on a marketing website, I would say, what's the difference between the two? So we get that different take on what it is, but we also remember to mention the keyword or for a nonprofit, maybe the, the program or the fundraising, you know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but so, to kind of keep something central to it, an idea. So in your guidelines, is, would that be the place where you'd say, this is how we use our name. This is how we use the program name. I mean, is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I actually have an opportunity myself uh, on a, it's a website that lists different, like if you're looking for different types of professionals. So uh, they actually have some ideas for us. And I know what's behind that is SEO, search engine optimization for their website, right? Mm -hmm. So you could even do that as a nonprofit and say, hey, we're looking for articles on these topics as a call out. So if you're interested, you know, Jarrett likes to look at numbers, the nonprofit nerd is going to be featured and she's going to talk about looking at your data, mm -hmm. those sorts of things, just to kind of guide the content in a direction that you want. But also I think to your point is leaving it open to different um, different opinions, different frames of, of mind or of reference. Like we were talking about in the green room, uh, you know, exposing yourself to a different culture or outside your own neighborhood even. Um, yeah, of course, different ideas. Yeah. So, you know, you, we've talked us through kind of the process of, of what, it, or I should say what the concept is. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the benefits of guest blogging because, um, I'm really curious, like, is that, is, is, is it like front and center? This is a guest blogger and then the content, or do you, do you always identify that? Or do you keep it at an arm's length? Like how, how do you intersect those viewpoints and people to the organization? I would, um, put a little something at the beginning and then typically guest bloggers get a bio at the end. So say, Hey, we've got our finance guru or our whatever thought leader, you know, nonprofit accounting thought leader here, giving us her take on this topic. 
the paragraph and then a bio. Mm -hmm. Um, That way it kind of distinguishes it from your staff writers or your, you know, whoever you've got doing, creating that content. Mm -hmm. I like that as a distinguisher. There's not really rules, but I think it's, it's a good idea, especially if there may be taking it in a different direction than people might normally see on your website. Not that it's completely off center, but like, okay, well think of it this way. Mm -hmm. You know, you are the the queen of SEO and for anyone watching or listening to us, I'm going to witness to you that when we go back through our metrics, your content, whenever you're on our show, you rank as some of the highest watched, um, pieces that we've done over three years. And I always think that it's because of your content and that it's great content. But more importantly, I think it's because you've worked your SEO magic on the back end because we give you your, those files. I mean, as a, uh, we don't pay our guests. And so what we do, we, we recompense them in essence with giving them the fully edited files. They can put them up on their website. They can put it into their social media. And you, my friend, and I've said this to you privately, you have been able to take these these pieces, turn them into blog posts, and maximize the hell out of it. And so it's such a fascinating thing to be able to talk to you about this because I see how you can move forward with these concepts, looping in more people in essence, right? Yes, yes, bringing the audiences together, um, bringing them to kind of to see what your business is. And I just love and appreciate the, the time you take to create those marketing graphics for me. I put them up. I use them as thumbnails. I recently launched my very small audience YouTube channel myself. And yes, I'm Good. excited. So what I'm able to do with these wonderful recordings is put those on my YouTube so that, you know, if you put my name in, it brings up my appearances on your show. It also brings up me, brings up my channel and yours which makes it just a wonderful partnership. And then you can use those, uh, uh, you know, I use the marketing images on social media. I create written content from what we've talked about. This time, I feel like a superhero. I created the content first. So now what I need to do is uh, I'll have my website folks embed the recording into that blog post so they can, so it's on my website. We'll put it on the YouTube channel and really utilize it the way that we would utilize our own my own content that we've created. It's kind of a, I feel like it's a cheat. <laughs> yeah. So now this is like, this might seem like a super basic question, but, and maybe this is just, this is my own, you know, bias for my career. But when I hear the word blogging, I think written word, but what you just like hit that thing and it's, it's really content a video content. It can be graphics. Right. I mean, it could be um, data viz, right? Mm -hmm. At least for now, at least for now, I say Google doesn't read your videos like you can't do a video of all your keywords and get the Google love from it. Now, I imagine it's coming soon. Um, (laughs) Ish, It's Google and AI. And I think maybe we want to touch on that artificial (laughs) a little today. Um, But So we need to have that written content. So one of the ideas uh, I'll be sharing actually on YouTube, but we'll share it here too. And I think we've talked about it is taking the podcast, whether it's your own or you have appearances like this on other podcasts Mm -hmm. and taking that transcript and Mm -hmm. making it uh, search engine friendly, which is something that I do offer. Um, I will, I've got to update some services on my website, but yes, I help with that because I think it's really important and it, it drives that we know you and I know it drives that traffic. I think also what we do is we title uh, the topics that I talk about. There's some strategy behind that as well. So for future guests, upcoming guests, I encourage you to kind of think about what's searchable. How do you want to be found and create your podcast appearances on those topics? And that shores up when someone says, can you speak? What are your topics you speak about? then you've got your short list of five or six topics and you say, these are, this is what I speak to Mm -hmm. mixing it up with some, you know, some other topics, but really the main focus are these five. So let's talk about the AI issue. Oh my gosh. Um, (laughs) AI is like, 
I'm, I'm a devotee of the New York Times. I cannot even believe how even in the New York Times, they talk about AI every single day in many places throughout their publication in all formats. It used to be we would talk about, you know, AI with art artificial intelligence within like the, the landscape of the computer world. Now we're even talking about it as it connects to, you know, cooking and travel. And I mean, it is just going forward. How does this impact guest blogging, blogging, building content? Because this is the here and the now and it is accessible for people like you and i it is it is i will be perfectly honest and say that i called my 19 year old stepson and said can you please talk to me about this chat gpt uh, yeah. my my friend and colleague asked me about it and i need to learn more about it and then i tried it myself so i tried it with a client that um we don't necessarily tell stories they say here's your keyword create an article that's this long that has this keyword this many times and that sort of a thing. Okay. So I put in, I did it twice for two. And the first time was, oh, it was a mishmash. I cut out half of what the AI put into it. Uh -huh. The second time. So it was me learning along with the software, which was wild to me. I'm like, I'm learning with a computer. Like it was this crazy, crazy yeah. experience. So I was able to edit it down that first article. And it probably took me as long to learn than it would have been to write the article. The next okay. article I was able to do very fast because I had learned pretty quickly. Okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like me writing for keywords, only I'm giving the AI some clues. Mm -hmm. And the better clues I gave, the better the result was. Mm -hmm. So what I took was this, you know, five tips about X. Mm -hmm. And I call it zhuzhing, right? We put some branding in, we mention the client's name, we mention their keyword, we add the appropriate links that we want to add and things like that. I ran it through, I was worried about duplicate content. Google doesn't like when we have the exact same content on different websites. Mm -hmm. I was worried about plagiarism, getting tagged for that. That's yeah. bad, right? I'm a writer. Like not only yeah. is it bad for a website, but as a writer, you don't want to get tagged. Exactly. Ran it through, it was original content, nothing else on the internet. I was able to feed it um, some links to content on the client's website, which I wrote. So I was like, oh, that's my writing. Like I, I, I didn't even plagiarize myself. <laughs> right, right. And that just sounds weird, but I write a lot. And I'm like, I wonder if I put this phrasing somewhere else. No, yeah. But I run that on all my content and there was nothing and it was branded. And it was a beautiful article and it worked. What it wasn't it wasn't storytelling. It wasn't tell me about the work that you've done on this project. I don't think that I'm going to go out of business with chat GPT and AI. I think nonprofits could use it. I was telling Julia, I had a return to do on Amazon and I was chatting and the thought came to me, am I talking to a computer and am I talking to a person? And as soon as it got to a point in the questions where it didn't know kind of what to do with me, <laughs> Mm -hmm. said, hold on, let me get you a, a customer service representative. And then I knew I'd been talking to AI and then they were sending me to a person. And so I chatted with the person and she's like, oh, I see the problem here. Let me help you with it. Mm -hmm. And that was really interesting. It was very efficient. And I feel like, I don't know, Julia, what do you think that, that nonprofits might be able to use this like for donors looking for the donor link, which should be obvious, but mm -hmm. we'll get to that or asking about a certain project or program, I mean, um, and things like that, that it could be kind of a customer service desk in some sense, like I used with Amazon, and then it would get you to someone, a real person. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think if you can think through and you have good advice and good support, it could be the sort of thing that allows you to um, find, you know, scholarly information. It allows you, you mentioned, in the green room chatter, you know, uh, volunteer opportunities, how to recognize the, the problem. So for example, if you're a, a domestic violence shelter, you know, how do you recognize somebody that's in an abusive situation or you yourself, or how do you get safe? I mean, there are a lot of different things that can help. I think if we can figure out how to deliver and manage the content right and how yeah. that looks yeah. and uh, because let's face it who can who can afford um on in the 
1.8 million nonprofits registered in this country of ours. How many can afford to have somebody sitting there answering questions? And right. that's what we do, right? Real in real time, IRL. So you you have to say what are some of these tools going to do to impact us? And I feel, and I can't wait to get your opinion on this. I feel like a lot of organizations are understanding the power of their blogs, but then their blogs are becoming, dare I say, bloated. There's so much content that if they don't have a good search function or they haven't categorized it, it's a mess. It gets lost. It yeah. gets lost. So, I mean, I can see this is kind of a refinement to what we're doing. And, and as part and parcel of that, I'm really interested to know if we're engaging guest bloggers. And again, you blew my mind because it could be video, it could be graphs. I mean, data viz, it's pretty crazy. What should this nonprofit be giving? Are you paying people? I mean, what what does this look like? What's, what's the transaction, I guess? The nonprofit provides their expertise. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about... Um, planned giving. Mm -hmm. It would be um, the importance of planned giving and the nonprofits writing it for an estate planning attorney. Mm -hmm. They'd probably want a conversation with the attorney. Um, I've, I've one that I've worked with and I think what she would want is what is planned giving, which AI could probably come up with some nice words for that, sure. but also what's the impact to the nonprofit. So we could have part of it actually generated but also what's the impact to the specific nonprofit. So it's almost like a starter with AI and then the nonprofit gives their expertise in that area or the impact to the nonprofit in that particular area. Mm -hmm. So that really the, the estate planning attorney, just as an example, could then use that on their social media, point their clients to that article and say, listen, this is how it impacted my, my nonprofit partner or my friend at this nonprofit, what it does for them to have that type of giving just as an example. Um, so it's really, and you don't, you don't give away everything, no blog posts. We, we shouldn't give away everything. And I was speaking to somebody the other day, it's like, it's just enough. So they pick up the phone and call us or email us, or whatever the call to action is. Um, you know, we're talking about giving. So we say, okay, you know, donors volunteer. Okay. We want volunteers to call or contact us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it is. It's really what, what you already do. I think if you have content on your website already, and videos, and you've talked about it, you could easily um, send that to a writer or send that to someone on your staff who, who is a writer or likes to write. We've talked about that. Like, yeah. how can you utilize your team or your volunteers in a way that um, highlights their skills and expertise and gets the nonprofit some, some help in whatever way that is? So you could take... Um, that give that information. And you may not even have to do an interview if you've already got some content out there. It's just a matter of, hey, we have this request for a guest blog on so-and-so's website. Can you kind of figure it out and pull down and yeah. we'll approve the article? You know, we'll, we'll go in and take a look and make sure it's, it's really what we want to say. Um, but really utilizing the people on your team, again, so you're not having that expense of a writer mm -hmm. necessarily. You know, I love the idea of the volunteership because that could be somebody who I'm like thinking retired English school teacher or, you know, whatever, where somebody could be like, yeah, I love to edit. I love to catch spelling mistakes and, you know, yeah. it can be done, you know, via email. Somebody can send that off and then you're going to be more confident about whatever, you know, that piece is that's going up. Um, again, this is the publisher hat that I'm wearing because I'm like, <laughs> oh, you know, somebody coming from the outside, you know. But yeah, I love that you said that because I bet you could find that talent out there wanting to volunteer and then use them in other ways. Yes, yes. And really capitalize on it. And it's, I remember Jarrett posted something, uh, posted on LinkedIn, and she said, How do you engage a board? And it's give them some ideas. And I think it's this, this is kind of in that same realm where we're, we're saying, okay, what do you, do you want to be the person that sends the letters, counts the money, writes okay. an article, contacts the press, gets an editor, you know, who finds an editor for us, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, utilize who you have for sure in your community. So uh, I have a networking group I've gotten involved with since we last spoke uh, right in Charlotte, because I wanted to meet some people in Charlotte. 
And I have an opportunity to blog on their blog to talk about. And they're all smaller, like kind of solopreneurs, smaller business people. And I have the opportunity and I was like, well, we have this portal and I didn't want my content to be locked behind the portal just for members because I do want to write for SEO. So that's something to think about as well. You don't want it locked behind any sort of like a paywall um, and make sure it's out there in the public. And it is, it's a public blog and you'll see me post something. I don't know what, I have so many ideas, Um, but that's another opportunity for me to be able to guest post. So if you're in a networking group or you're part of a chamber, is there, is part of the membership being able to write on the website? And if it's not, ask. They're probably looking for some content. And if they're redoing their website or they're mentioning that, then that's a real opportunity to, to get that wider audience and share what you do and who you help and an area of expertise too. So we don't have a lot of time left, but I'm, I'm want, I want to ask this question. How often should you be doing this? And should you plan this out? Like every Tuesday, we're going to have a guest blogger, or is it just a little bit more free free for all. I mean, how, how, how structured should we make this? I think it goes along with, um, talking about your content calendar, kind of planning your marketing for the year and leaving spots open. A guest blogger would be one of those spots, Mm -hmm. Uh, monthly, quarterly. Um, someone's interested, let them do it more often. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a lot because you probably have your own content going up. But it's it's a great way to connect. Oh, another idea would be if you're working with another nonprofit, right on each other's websites. Smart. Oh my gosh, of course. That's a genius. Yeah. And you know, I gotta say, I love that idea because so many funders are pushing for collaboration. And that's just another way to support this whole effort to say, yeah, we we play well in the sandbox, you know. Mm-hmm. So very interesting. Easy. Well, I want to make sure that everybody knows um, that you can get to Anne's work um, through agencycontentwriter.com. She has amazing, amazing content, of course, beautifully done because she's a content writer. But um, this is a really, really interesting um, post that she has. um, Quick guide to guest blogging. She's covered a lot of things that we talked about here today, but she in this particular piece gets into kind of the mechanics of it as well and i found it to be really really helpful so go ahead and take a look at that again agencycontentwriter.com and navigate your way over to her blog posts Um, you'll find some amazing things the website is beautifully done i have website envy (laughs) just gotta say say, it's really really well thank you Um, Yeah, no, it's really, really well done. And then in addition to all the other things, um, you are a published author and and the title is just gut-wrenching. We don't get to ring the bell, uh, My CML Story by Anne McCauley Lopez. Check it out. It's an amazing, amazing uh, journey that you get to share in a very private and profound way. And so I just wanted to make sure that we could um, highlight that. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's really an amazing thing. Again, Anne McCauley Lopez, you're a rock star. I never, ever leave my time with you without learning something new, with having a hair on fire moment. And at the same time, my friend, you make it very achievable. Thank you. you. Yeah, I don't think it has to be complicated. Well, (laughs) there's so much complication in the nonprofit (laughs) sector to have somebody say, if this doesn't have to be complicated <laughs> is a major thing i just gotta say <laughs> but check out Anne um, at agencycontentwriter.com an amazing uh, amazing leader within our sector and somebody who can give you some really inform- great information again i'm julia patrick ceo of the american nonprofit academy Jarrett ransom ceo of the raven group will be joining us back shortly Also, we want to make sure that we thank all of our amazing sponsors from Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, to our friends at Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Fundraising Academy at National University, the nonprofit nerd herself, and nonprofit thought leader. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. And, okay, as we end today, I'm going to go back to my desk, go back to my office. I'm going to get going on some writing 
And you've really spurned me on, my friend. Thank you. Wonderful. It's always wonderful to see you, Julia. Thank you so much. It's been great. Hey, everybody, as we like to remind everyone, ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, our guests, and of course, our co-host, Jared Ransom, to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone.